There's a lot of people trying to make sense of a rather frightening world at the moment, looking at the news, watching graphs and figures and death rates, and talk about exponential growth and flattening the curve. I'm not a medical expert. I'm a science and maths teacher, also a socialist and trade union activist. And that's why I thought it might be useful to try and put this small video together to try and explain those things as simply as possible. Now, modelling the spread of a pandemic, particularly with a new virus like COVID-19, is a complicated science and certainly something that I would leave to the experts. But as a first approximation, everybody is agreeing that this could be treated as a case of exponential growth. Exponential growth is a specific pattern of change that can be modelled mathematically. Increases are very gradual at first, then quickly pick up and then accelerate, with the curve becoming steeper and steeper as the numbers get bigger. You'll have already have seen this kind of curve, describing increases in infection rates and in death rates in the UK and around the world. There are lots of examples of things that grow in an exponential way. But here you can see a model of somebody who infects the three people immediately close to them. Those three people in turn start to infect the people close to them. So from one, we go to three, and then from three, we go to nine. And from then, of course, the numbers increase extremely rapidly. One simple model of exponential growth is shown by the old tale of the supposed inventor of chess, who simply asked for his reward to be able to have one piece of rice for the first square on the chessboard, two on the second, four on the third, eight on the next, sixteen, thirty-two, and so on. What sounds like quite a modest request is of course far from it. With exponential doubling, by the time that even half the chessboard is filled, there are already four billion grains of rice upon it. Let's plot that exponential growth on a line graph, plotting first two, then four, then eight. To start with, it looks like steady linear growth as the green line shows. But as we add more points and have to change the scale to get used to the bigger numbers, 16, 32, 64, 128 and so on, you can see the black exponential growth curve rising steeply with time as the numbers get higher and higher. If you really want to understand the graphs of the real data which are coming up at the end of this video, then this little bit of maths might be useful to you, although not essential. First of all, just because a curve on a graph is going upwards doesn't mean that it shows exponential growth. So for example, here are two curves one shows exponential growth, the other one is a cubic curve, something which is showing the cube of a number, y equals x cubed. Both the graphs rise quite steeply, although you can see that over time it's the exponential one that really keeps up its increase at the steepest rate. So how can you tell which is which just by looking at a curve? Well really, you have to use something called natural logarithms. Now, if you can remember whatever maths you ever did about logarithms, you may be able to follow this slide, which shows that if you take the equation on the left, which is the general equation for an exponential curve, and you take the natural logarithms of both sides, you end up with an equation, log y equals log y naught plus kx, which, if you also remember your equation for a straight line, is of the form y equals mx plus c. So in short, if you plot the natural logarithms rather than plotting the actual data, then you should end up, if it's exponential, with a straight line graph with the gradient being k, the growth constant of the exponential growth. If you just about grasp that, then let's look at the graphs themselves. On the left in red is our logarithmic doubling. So the numbers going 2, 4, 8, 16 and so on as on the chessboard. On the right in blue is a cubic increase. So 1 cubed is 1, 2 cubed is 8, 3 cubed is 27 and so on. 
If we plot those two graphs according to their natural logarithms, the column on the right, then what do we get? It's quite clear that the red data that came from the exponential growth gives a clear straight line. Whereas the blue data, although it was a curve that was rising sharply, when plotted by, by its logarithms, quite clearly does not give a straight line and it is not exponential growth. So where does all this maths get us in terms of understanding the problems we face right now with COVID-19? Let's go back to the graph that we had when we were looking at the chessboard with that black line showing exponential growth rather than the green steady growth which it might have appeared to have been in the early days. As the previous section on further maths tried to explain, the rate at which an exponential growth goes upwards depends on a constant k, which I've called the growth constant. If you can lower the value of k, then the exponential growth will take place more gradually. The numbers won't go up quite so quickly. That's what people are talking about when they're saying we need to flatten the curve. They mean that we've got to lower the value of k, the growth constant. Now, the original graph that we had for the chessboard, when you double every time you go from one square to the next, actually has a value of k of 0.693. But let me show you the curves as we decrease k through 0 0.40, 0 0.30, 0 0.20 and finally 0 0.10. You can see how quite small changes in the value of k reduce the growth rate quite quickly. They flatten the curve. That's what we've got to do with COVID-19. Now all those mathematical formulae can seem very cold when you know the hard reality that lies behind them. The data is showing rapidly increasing deaths and rapidly increasing infection rates. Although unfortunately, although infection rates is really what you should use to show exponential growth, because of the lack of testing, the criminal lack of testing that's been carried out so far in the UK, those figures are entirely unreliable. Sadly, the only reliable figures we can use are those for actual deaths owing to COVID-19. And here they are, up to the present time, shown on the graph in front of you. I hope you can see in front of you relatively recent data. I plan to try and update this video using the latest data from Public Health England, which is plotted here on the red spots and with a red line showing the average exponential growth curve that links those points. Obviously, there is a concern if an exponential trend is in place and continues, then those totals will rise rapidly in the dates in future. Now, in order to draw the graphs, I have taken the x-axis for time, where the zero is actually March the 12th. So the numbers there are days after the 12th of March, and you can see the position of April the 1st on the axis. The reason for this is that the data in the first few days was so low, it was difficult to draw any accurate graphs from it. But starting with a value of 10 deaths from March the 12th, the rest of the data and the exponential growth has been worked out from there. Now week one therefore was March the 12th to March the 19th and the data there, although quite low totals, was worryingly showing that if it was exponential growth, the growth constant of 0 0.40 meant that the curve would rise very sharply indeed, meaning that there would be quite high death totals coming very rapidly. Encouragingly, although of course the cumulative death total continued to rise in week 2, from March the 19th to March the 26th, the exponential growth constant drawn from those trends was considerably lower, about 0 0.20. That means between week 1 and week 2, it looks like we are flattening the curve. The other important thing that can be drawn from the data for week 2 as it does indicate that the total deaths are rising exponentially. 
When you plot the data according to its natural logarithms, as shown in this graph and explained in the earlier section in Further Maths, then the graph appears to be pretty clearly a straight line. This is what you would expect for exponential growth. The fact that the data does appear to be following an exponential growth trend is of course concerning. It does mean that everything I've been discussing in this video about how exponential growth can increase rapidly could become true in terms of death totals in the UK. The optimistic sign is of course that the growth rate had fallen so to some extent we had flattened the curve but obviously we will have to see what happens in the time ahead. You're right to be shocked and worried by the implications of exponential growth. Indeed, it seems that only when Johnson saw the report from Imperial College explaining what this could mean, he was finally driven into at least starting to take some of the steps that should have been begun far, far earlier to control the COVID-19 outbreak. The Imperial College report, as shown in these graphs that were carried in the Observer newspaper, warned that unmitigated, with no action being taken, exponential growth would increase and not reach a saturation point where it would start to stop and fall until approximately 510,000 people had died in Great Britain and perhaps 2.2 million in the United States. So how do we lower that growth rate? How do we make that line less steep? Well, by making sure that infections are not spread as quickly to people around them. Obviously, social isolation, social distancing is part of that. Making sure that people have protective equipment. Making sure that people are being paid so that they can stay off work instead of having to go into work. Making sure that we've got sufficient testing so that we can tell doctors and nurses whether in fact they're infectious or not when they're working in a hospital. Of course, there are factors that could actually make the curve go steeper rather than flatter. For example, a lack of ventilators and other essential equipment in hospitals. The National Health Service becoming overwhelmed by the number of patients after years of underfunding. Time will tell, but we will act together in our communities, in our trade unions, together to try to make sure that we defend everyone around us and make sure that we learn the lessons for the future. Some of you may be concerned that even when we flatten the curve a little by lowering the growth constant, the math shows that the exponential growth still picks up eventually and still accelerates into very large figures. Does that mean that all the urgent steps that are being taken are just putting off the inevitable? I'm glad to say no. More detailed models show that the fall in the growth constant can then continue and rather than having an exponential curve the graph is more of an S shape with the increases gradually slowing down and then reaching a maximum. Death rates can then start to slow down and eventually start to fall. This is precisely what's been happening in places like China and South Korea where the right steps have been taken at an early stage. 